Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a very special episode of Through the Window Podcast. You're joined with the whole crew, the whole squad of Otterworks. Um, should we go around the room and everyone can introduce their outfit? Should we start with you, Joss? <laughs> sure. Um, I am Michael Scott, but in Prison Mike character. From The Office. From The Office, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, Max? I'm a pilot. <laughs> 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 That's it. Uh, <laughs> meow. I'm a devil cat. A sexy <laughs> devil cat. Yes, you are, Dan. Thank you. And I am a mummy, if, you, you? if you couldn't guess. Or Michelin man. Mummy, mummy. <laughs> or a chef. <laughs> or a chef. <laughs> the hat looks very chefy, doesn't it? <laughs> but yes, this is our Halloween our Halloween themed podcast. We're going to have a few monsters and uh, see where this spooky themed pod leads to. That's why you wanted a monster. Uh, because Halloween is smart. Yeah. That was definitely the reason. It, I'm already so hot. <laughs> <laughs> you look hot, mate. Cheers, mate. Uh, out of interest, how much, how much thought and effort did you guys put into your outfits? How last minute was it in the end? Uh, it's been decided within the last 12 hours. You, yeah. Dan? Uh, mine was this morning, woke up, thought better get something together. Uh, I knew I had this shirt in my wardrobe. From I bought this actually in Amsterdam when I was 18. Uh, and I thought, well, that's a nice cat print. I'll go with the cat theme. You've uh, had that nearly 10 years. Yeah, so um, Hannah went out into the shed, bless her, at 7 a.m. this morning and picked out some devil horns for me. And then she gave me an array of uh, makeup items, eyeliner, some stuff like that. I've actually got some eyeliner on. Can you tell? Why did you have devil horns in the shed? Just Why did Hannah go to the shed? Why didn't you go? I don't know. She was just like, oh, I think I know where they are. I'll go down to the shed and get them. Fair. That's a good answer. So, yeah, I've got, nice. I've got eyeliner on my nose. Looks great, mate. Nose liner. Nose how, about, how about you, Max? Were you prepped for this for a while? I ordered the hat on Wednesday. Just the hat? Um, so you had everything else from previous Well, the experience. ties from home, the hat, the glasses, and my little wings here, they came in a little set, uh, which is ideal. I had this and the shirt prior from previous job, and I thought, how can I do this very cheaply? Oh, I know, I'll just get a hat and some sunnies, get some like five-pound sunglasses off Amazon. And then I can upcycle my old work uniform into a pilot. Suits you, mate. Cheers, mate. How Sorry. about you, Ben? Uh, I decided this last week because I knew it would be the easiest one to do once it's on because it's cheap and we have so much toilet roll here in the office. Do you think there's any way we can get that toilet roll back on the roll afterwards? Uh, if you want to use me as a as a wipe, you can. Oh, yeah. Perfect. You, can you stay underneath the roll, though? Will I yeah. use it? We can, we can attempt to. If anyone sneezes or has a cold, just let me know. Perfect. Ben will just die in front of them. I'd like to use your elbow. Left. It, that might rip. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben's just uh, from previous childhood experiences, what's been your favourite Halloween costume that you've ever worn? Oh my God. Now, this is a weird one because I was never really into Halloween as a kid. Why not? I was quite a scared child, I think. I was quite a shy child as it was. And I was very easily scared. So I didn't really do anything for Halloween because I didn't like it. So you never got involved. I went trick or treating once and hated it. Just didn't really get what the fuss was about. Free hand, free candy. Yeah, yeah, but it was like it's just a bit weird, isn't it? Going around knocking on houses dressed as kind sh- of a tra- shit vampire tradition, though, isn't it? Chocolate. It's been going on for years, Joss. It has been going on for years, Dan. So you're just trying to go against that or something? Yeah. Well, when Fair when enough. did you first go trick or treating? Have when you I always enjoyed it? Yeah, well, I still go now. <laughs> Same. Ne- well, when is Hall- <laughs> Halloween's next week? So I'll be out, probably going to Rawton. St- I usually start in Rawton. Rawton's good, uh, and then finish up in Old Town. Mm. Go up the hill. Wow. Yeah. You really go for it. Yeah. Well, rich families and stuff. So yeah, may as well finish big. Do you plan out your route before, like properly? Yeah. Like, which houses give the best chocolate? Me and my dad get the ordnance survey map out, and nice. we usually just map out the biggest land. Um, quite good like that, really. Yeah. yeah. Have you had any funny stories of trick or treating as a child, or any experiences that? You know, bring a um, memory back to you. Yeah, one time I went trick or treating, and um, uh, the woman answered the door. And I said trick or treat, and she just opened a box of eggs. <laughs> what? I <laughs> said, "Here, have an egg." <laughs> and I looked round at my dad, like, "Should I take the egg?" And dad was like, and "I was like, <laughs> okay." Nice. Took the egg, gave it to my dad. No, no idea what happened to it after that, but probably the weirdest thing. Also, someone gave me a pound once. Yes, yeah, that, that cool. is a good I loved day. it when people gave you money. Um, I once went trick or treating. Uh, we, because I'm an only child, uh, 
I used to go out with other families because, you know, it's better when you're in a group. Nice. And um, went out with this family one time. There was about six children, all trick-or-treating. We're going out. We're having a good time. And then um, we get back to the house. And we've all got our own little pots of food, sweets. And the the lady, the mum, makes us put them all on the floor and divides them. That's by the six. fuck oh, off. So yeah. I've gone to the extra effort of getting, you know, I've, I've groveled at doors. I'll yeah. try and get the best yeah. sweets. Yeah. Next thing you know, I've lost all of them. Oh, suddenly everyone else has to have a little bit of mine. That's Absolutely. Hate some communism. of us got money because we all went to different parts as well. So I came away with money. Some people didn't. Whose mum was that? Um, I don't want to name drop on here. Fair enough. Her name's for their, for their safety, we probably shouldn't. Yeah. But, but yeah, how <laughs> yeah. Wherever yeah. that woman is, I hope she has a terrible Halloween. Yeah. Because that's unfair. Me too. Yeah, how horrible was that? That's like last pra- place trophies, isn't it? I think yeah. what it was, maybe her, she saw her own kids losing out in some way. So she was like, I'm going to... Make the most of Dan's She was stuff. that mum at school though, wasn't she? Yeah, Dan's loot is going to be shared across everyone's. Unfair. I, I bet she's senior at the TA meetings. Yeah. <sighs> God. But you, Max, you have any funny stories from Halloween? Not really. Halloween. I love Halloween. Um, no, again, I was never really that big into it. What the fuck? I never really enjoyed it that much because I always saw it as mm-hmm. like, oh, you got to, you know, you pay all this money to dress up and then it's over in like two hours. And I was never Amen. really that big into sweets. I prefer chocolate. And I used to get really annoyed when I go to all these places and they give you sweets. And I'm like, this is shit. Like, can you not give me something good? Um, I was very ungrateful like that. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so I didn't really enjoy it too much. I used to go trick-or-treating a little bit. But as soon as I was of the age where trick-or-treating was like, oh, yeah, no, it's kind of, you don't really have to do it this year. I'd be like, right, I'm staying in. But then... Uh, no, my goal was always to dress up for as cheap as possible and just see, is there stuff around my house I can do? So I think, not last year, the year before, I went as a SoundCloud rapper <laughs> and just bought, I went to like Halfords or something, bought some like chain and like wrapped a chain around my neck and then bought a padlock because it was when like that was really popular. Yeah. Um, and then just bought, I think it was like, I don't know, some shit eyeliner or something and just drew loads of face tattoos all over me. Did you take the key for the lock out with you? No, I, but I did. I didn't take it out with me, but I put it on my keys. Yeah, I knew that. Okay, if I lose my keys, then I'm really fucked. Yeah, because you'd be like, I don't know. Yeah. What, would you leave one at home? But then, what if you get caught out somewhere? I'm not gonna lie. That was a thought process that I didn't really have. I should have Fair had enough. it, but it all worked out for the best. And here I am as a pilot. So you're both quite inexperienced trick or treaters, then. I am. We are. Yeah, I'd say <laughs> maybe we should go trick or treating this year. Maybe today. Trick or treating around the office park. I would firebird. Are you guys going to carve, carve, carve a pumpkin? <laughs> no, that's another thing that I always thought. This seems like a waste of time. I, and, and messy and too long. I think I've only done it twice. And it is not easy to do, is it? It's a bit of a mission to try and do that. Like, you could spend hours doing it. It's a, it's a family event, yeah. Yeah, but it's a bit boring, isn't it? You do it, Dan? Yeah. You, you loved mean, it? The gutting of a pumpkin is quite an experience. Yeah, with a spoon. You really get your hands in there. Yeah, yeah, you get to get gooey. You start with a spoon, but eventually you're like, I'll tell you what. It's a right passage. That's gotta... how they get this started, carving pumpkins. Yeah. And then... I'm going to have to get the mittens in there, so you suddenly get your hands in there, you've got pumpkin juice all over you. Seeds. And everyone's like covered in pumpkin stuff, and we're all naked and rolling around in pumpkin seeds. Here's one. At a family event? Come on. Well, yeah, my family's. Yeah. Right, right. What's the best pumpkin-flavoured food or drink? I know that Ooh, ben, nice. Ben's a fan of latte. The pumpkin oh, spice works. latte. I love a pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie is a I've good. never had anything pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You're so boring, man. I know. I know. <laughs> you don't trick or treat. <laughs> I'm really not about this time of year. Well, I'm, I am, but not the events. You've never had anything pumpkin. No, you did. You had so. a pumpkin chocolate. Oh, no. no you, you had one. Oh, yeah. The so. donut. The donut. Pippin's donut. You'd say the Starbucks drink is better than that donut. Yeah, because really? it, it's nostalgic. Wow. A pumpkin flavoured hot drink. Nostalgic. But do you actually Nostalgic. like the. We've only had it for the last three years. Yeah. Nah. Do you actually like the taste of it or do yeah. you like it because it's a pumpkin spice latte? I don't know. And it's autumn. And it's, it's a good it's question. I like it, question. but I don't know. If you if you took the memories away, I don't know if That's I still what I mean. would. I don't know. If I took the ability to hashtag pumpkin spice latte and pose with a little Starbucks drink and a nice <laughs> autumn jumper, would you still enjoy the drink? Yeah. Probably. Interesting. Fair enough. Dan? Favourite pumpkin-flavoured um, snack or drink? Off the top of my head, I don't really know. I think the only thing that I can put a memory to would be the spice latte. Wow. And I, they're all right, but they're just so sweet. Mm. They're just a bit too much for me. A bit too milky. Yeah. Very milky. 
Joss, tell me about where did you get that bandana from? Is that something you've had no. in the wardrobe for a while? No. Um, it is actually Charlotte's sisters or Charlotte's families. I'm nice. not sure who it belongs to. The family bandana. Family, the family bandana. <laughs> um, so you're passed down through generations. Crip, <laughs> the crip, crip family, yeah? Oh, yeah. Um, Careful with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a pilot, Dan. Listen to him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just had a suit. Thought it's got to be prison mic. It's not actually the right colour either. It's purple, the one that he wears. It's a really nice blazer, actually. It suits you really well. Your pectorials are really nice, and that's all your arms. Sure, and your shoulders look quite brown. Oh, I didn't even see the shirt. Wow. Yeah, like a paisley like print a... on it. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. Exactly. Paisley, paisley makes the girl go crazy. Come on. <laughs> wow. Go on. You're wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, where do, where's the shirt from? Is that a shirt that you wear to weddings and stuff? Yeah. Wow. The shirt's from Moss Brothers wow. in the outlet. Moss Bros. Moss Bros. Moss Bros. So's the suit. So's the tie. Very stylish. Thank you. 10 out of 10. Got it for my sister's wedding. Nice. Well done to her for getting married. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I can't say thank you, can I? <laughs> what else have we got on our list of things? Um, my, um, one, my question for the group was, mm. uh, and I'll, I'm going to start with you on this, Dan. Oh, for God's sake. I'm going to go around the room so you guys can think about your answers. <coughs> but in the spirit of Halloween, Halloween. what is the scariest Halloween. thing that's ever happened to you? Scariest thing that has ever happened to me. Great question. Um, to be put on the spot. Do you want me to lead while you think about it? Yeah, if that's all right. If you've got an example you can give. Uh, the scariest thing that ever happened to me was I was surfing when I was like 12. Legend. Thank you. On a family holiday. Obviously not knowing what I was doing. I, no, I think I was bodyboarding. It wasn't surfing. It was like I was trying to surf on a bodyboard. Brave. And um, got swept under the, by one of the waves. And then the current of the wave behind it pulled me back under before I got to the top and I thought I was going to drown and I remember fe- wow. thinking I'm, I'm going to die that was Jeez. the scariest moment I've ever had oh, nice. that's pretty scary that's a proper like near, <laughs> near death experience yeah. like your life is in I was probably under for like 10 seconds but it felt like 4 hours do you know what I mean where it's yeah. like oh my god I'm actually being held under at this point that's pretty scary yeah. no one knows where I am yeah that's horrible really killed the vibe there did it, did it put you <laughs> off going in the sea for a little while yeah years I bet. not as much as crabs did <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. because I don't know what it is mate the idea of whaling and like we're well, just like in shallow waters and just, I just always used to be terrified of getting pinched by a crab and that used doing to f- what in shallow waters? wading <laughs> I thought you said whaling <laughs> <laughs> well in the spirit of Halloween you know I had the same Halloween. thing with jellyfish yeah if I saw a jellyfish I was like right this, be- this beach is written off yeah we're going somewhere else I couldn't swim in the sea for years because of crabs mm. even though I never saw a crab I was going to say I don't think I've ever seen a crab yeah I um wow. I once went swimming in the Thames at Letchlade and I was compl- like I convinced myself so much that the crayfish in the Letchlade in the Letchlade Thames were going to bite my feet. <laughs> um and if you have you been in the Thames? Actually yeah, the, no. the gr- it's like soot like you put your foot in and your foot sinks in like mud and all it's that. It's gross. Yeah. It's horrible and um yeah I was so convinced I was going to get eaten up by some crayfish. That was quite scary. Did you? Uh, no I didn't. So the scariest thing that's ever happened to you is crayfish. No, that's up there. Um, I was just putting in something whilst I try and think of something else that's happened that's quite scary. Has anyone else got a scary story, Joss? I'm still trying to think. I'm trying to rack this brain of mine. My my scary story isn't like a a life experience like that. Mine's that's more, okay. Mine's more of like a oh being spe- scared like oh you've done something wrong. Mm. Ooh, so mine, good. Mine is. Um, I don't know if. And if you know, but in Rawton, there used to be an old hotel yeah. called the Ivy. Um, and it was, it closed down for whatever reason. It used to be like a big wedding venue, hotel, whatever. Um, and it closed down and it was left empty for a few years. Um, and then one year, I know a, l- a lot of people that would start kind of going in there. They wouldn't break entry because it was like left open. There was like open doors and open windows. People would just go in there, have a look around whatever obviously there'd be people that would take the piss a bit mess about all of that but um urbex urbex that's what it was wasn't it yeah um one day me and a group of friends went in there Bad boys. um because it's like oh there's this massive building that's just been left empty let's go and see all these cool like you know like the the king suite and all this cool stuff that's just been left there because like everything was left there like the plates the cutlery the beds the bedding Literally, it was like someone had just plucked the people out of there. Um, so we went in there. It was completely trashed. Like, people had already been in there. There was, like, graffiti everywhere. 
one of the bathrooms had poo all up the walls. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> nice. I, just, I distinctly remember that. <laughs> oh, um, my God. And then we were kind of near the end of it, and um, we were just in one of the rooms, just, like, looking around. There's, like, you know, like a bed that had been flipped upside down. How old were you at this point? <sighs> I think I was a year eight. Okay. So that's, like, 12, 12 13. Yeah. But it was, like, in my village, like, literally just down the road from me. So just out with a couple of mates. Um, and then there's this, like, massive knock on the door. Like, you know, like, when you're, like, three and your dad comes home from work oh. and you've been a dick. That kind oh. of knock on the door. And it's, like, police, open up. I shit you not. It's, like, community police officer or whatever. But at that point, we're, like, oh, shit, I'm going to jail. I'm never going to see my mum and dad <laughs> yeah. again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they pull us out, they, like, line us up in the corridor, and they're, like, you know, they're giving it to us. They're, like, they're screaming at us. Really? Yeah. There's this one guy who was, like, in a shirt and a tie. I don't know what his, his role would have been, um, but he was absolutely blasting us. And then, like, asked for all of our details, called our parents. Um, he came, I think he came round and saw my mum. Luckily, oh. I, I wasn't at home at that point, because I would have, like, I don't know what I would do. I just would shit my pants. Um, <laughs> but yeah, mate, that was probably the scariest. Bill was most scared I've ever been. That's awful. I've, I even felt my heart drop when you knocked on the table then. Yeah, it was horrible. It was really horrible. And then my mum was like, you cannot go out with your mates for a couple of weeks. You need to focus on the schoolwork. Were you grounded? No, not grounded as such. But it was just like... Semi-grounded. Focus on, focus on school for a little bit. Focus on you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you for a bit, Joss? And I did. Get a job. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take anything he says seriously. <laughs> Max, have you got one? Um, I definitely do. Not None that really come to my head very much. Um, I remember... I remember walking through uh, Camden at like one in the morning. And then... We were trying to get back to my friend's house in Clapham Common. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've been to Clapham Common, but at night time it can be pretty scary. Um, and these blokes were following us for about two hours. Jeez. We were like, to the point where we were like running down the road. On foot? Away. Yeah. These guys like would literally every single turn we made, they would like follow us. Um, and I think that's probably the most scared I've ever been, like to the point where I was like, right, we need to, we need to plan the route that we're going to take because we need, if, if they catch up to us, we need to be at a certain point where there's other people around and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was ages ago. That must have been when we were like 15, 16. What happened? They didn't catch us, luckily. Did you started running? Oh, we were booking it like properly. For ages? Yeah, shifting. Um, and then we managed, to get, we managed to lose them and then go back to my mate's house. But I just remember being sat in his house thinking... That was close. Fuck. Yeah. And I was from like... <clears throat> obviously, Reading's far enough out of London where you're not exactly a London local. You're yeah. like a Londoner. So I was just sat there like... I'm never coming here ever again. Yeah. Oh my god, this is scary. <laughs> London's place. awful. Scariest place ever. Um, and then there was another time when I, I was in New York when I was like 12, and this is probably when I was just starting to get into photography. I remember being on the subway, and I took a picture of a guy on the subway, and um, he was like, "Delete that." And I shit my pants. So imagine like a 12 year old taking a picture of you, just like imagine a little nerd. 12 year old Max really into <laughs> photography with a pilot takes hound. a picture of you <laughs> with a pilot hat on um, and yeah this guy just in the most stern voice just w- like bollocked me without bollocking me mm. and yeah I just remember freezing up being like I'm oh, sorry delete <laughs> it's quite hard to think of like really scary stories because I feel like we've just naturally I feel like if it's that scary you kind of like block it out it's put in the back of your head but yeah. there's definitely moments like you had there Josh where someone like you're doing something you weren't supposed to do and something bad yeah. happens I can't think of any but I know I definitely experienced them yeah I guess like one that we've had is when we're in Cambridge oh yeah that was bad um, when we're in Cambridge and we had a lovely wagamamas after a shoot and then we're walking back to a car and we walked down the stable alleyway and there was this guy who was like lingering about in the alleyway and we just kind of paced it past him and we had to pay for the ticket at the end of this alleyway um, but as we walked by, he like muttered something, didn't he? To his mm. like, we couldn't see anyone else. It was just him. Different on his language. They just muttered something, and then we were like, "Oh, okay, just carry on." So we just stood at the end, and Ben had his back to them, and he was just getting his wallet out to pay for this car. And um, I'm like looking over, and these guys out of like nowhere, like three guys with like balaclavas, like just fucking pace it down this path towards us. <laughs> And then, like, I think Ben is like literally about to pin. I was like, "Put that fucking like, put that ticket away. We need to go." You was like, "Let's fucking go!" Yeah. So then, like, <laughs> put the put the ticket back in the wallet, and we just paced it through this car park. 
like sprinting. Yeah. Oh my through god. This in the centre of Cambridge. Were they chasing Cent- you? Yeah. yeah. Like, centre of Cambridge, like three guys in Balaclava. About 10 pm. Chasing us through this car park. And we were like just. We, luckily, we both had like our running trainers on and we were just <laughs> going through it. We both luckily had I'll running be, shoes on. Yeah, it we? was like a sponsored like Brooks, <laughs> Brooks advert or something. Like. They weren't catching us, nah, mate. We, we were, were both so in like quick. the height of like run training as well. Yeah. We just fucking rent. But like. It was so weird because we didn't expect it to happen. We Not thought, in Cambridge. Oh, such a nice little yeah. area. But, Cambridge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that was scary. Close, like, wasn't we, it? We ran around like through the car park, like down a couple of levels, came out this end. There was like a pub. We ran past the pub and then the guys like kind of came out there and then just stopped. We like ran around these houses and we were like, shit, how do we get back to the car? <laughs> now, how yeah. do we pay for this ticket now? Yeah. We had to go and buy a different entrance. And I remember... Yeah. I remember like paying for the ticket, getting to the car, and I had to drive. I had to drive the car out a little bit so Dan could get in. And I remember just like as soon as Dan got in and shut the door, it was like, oh, yeah, I say lock that door. <laughs> I say, like, they were big car. guys, man. Yeah, that was scary. That's why I don't like Halloween. Why? Because like, it reminds you of scary times. Yeah. Oh yeah, but out. sometimes it's fun to be scared, right? Nah, it's not. It helps nah. you grow. It's like horror movies. I don't understand. I've never understood. Anyone that knows me knows that I just cannot do horror films at all. Like, even if it's remotely scary, it just destroys me. So I don't understand why anyone... It's like people going to the cinema to watch a horror film. Why on earth would you ever pay to go and not sleep for three days? Oh, oh sorry. I have... I've done, you just reminded me of a really good one there. Oh. I was 17 and I'd gone to see Paranormal Activity at the cinema. Fuck that. Um, and I, and Big I, film. And I, I've gone with a few friends from college and we have gone to the cinema in Greenbridge and my parents, my whole family was away on holiday in my in, in the house so i was like, oh yeah you know come watch the film we'll go back to mine and and chill out and whatever do whatever you do when you're 17 watch the film i was petrified like no, nothing really scares me apart from like paranormal stuff because i think oh my god mate this what can you do in that mm. situation you know anyway finish the film we're all a bit on edge and they were like oh i'm gonna go back to mine i'm gonna go back to mine and they all like end up going back to theirs and i'm like it's like, oh, that's so good so good you know it's gonna go back to my house my detached house and you know it's, it's, it's a, it was a five bed house it was big and it was just like i have to go back into that be alone in it like oh, drop I, no, but i mean <laughs> right mate but i mean like Privilege. a spirit be in my pool on my own no, yeah. but, um, my butler's not in <laughs> <laughs> the butler wasn't in all of these fine details but what i'm trying to say is like it wasn't like a small house you could just like shut the door it was like it was just a lot of rooms and it was just echoey it was echoey and noisy it was old and i remember getting in and like i had the lights on i was playing music on my phone and my sony ericsson i was like whatever you do ben just don't don't let the spirits know that you're scared just you know go get some food go in your room and i'm upstairs in my room and I'm, i've kind of calmed down a little bit and i shit you not to this day i hear like something coming up the stairs no one was in this like two in the morning something's literally walking up the stairs oh, shit, to this friend. day i guarantee you something was happening and i had to, i maneuvered my wardrobe next to my door to get into my bedroom because i was at the end of the landing and i put a skateboard lengthways between the wardrobe and the door so no one could physically get in not that, that would stop a spirit it would come straight through the door yeah. and um this is about two in the morning i ended up watching tv till about eight in the morning um on loud until my parents got home because i couldn't sleep i was that scared i was petrified wow fuck me see why all of that has come from paranormal activity which you paid money to go and see mm. why well, I thought my friends were coming over. <laughs> I thought it was going to be safe, you know? Like, it's easy to act confident when you've got someone else there, but I was in the house mm-hmm. alone. And it creaks, man. Like, yeah, you, don't notice, it. you don't notice house creaks until you've watched a scary movie and you're alone by yourself. And it's yeah. like, all of a sudden, the fridge makes a noise. When did, when did that start happening? Radiators, mate. Ra- yeah. I've almost had panic attacks because of radiators. Like, heart attacks, even. It's ridiculous. I've, yeah. never, even, I've never watched a scary film in a cinema. It's the one thing I've never done. I wouldn't mind doing it. I'd like to do it. It's a good experience. But, um, yeah. Just don't go home alone. True. Did you ever, you know, at Thorpe Park, they had the um, saw experience? Yeah. Mm. Or the, you can go through, you like walk through, don't you? And then it's like someone like chases you through the Was that thing. like Fright Night? I was think that, it's just it an that? experience you could just go to and they had it all year yeah. round. It was like part of the ride. I had so many mates at college and like, at school would be like, oh, it's Halloween, we're going Fright Night. And I was like, absolutely fucking no way. Like, are you mental? It was expensive. Like, it wasn't cheap to go on this trip. Mm. I just thought... I'd see, like, Snapchat stories and, like, Instagram stories of people that went. There's, like, people chasing around with, like, chainsaws and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to play card. Cheers, mate. I'm just going to chill at home. On my own. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's what I mean. That coffee machine went off and, you know, it shit me up a little bit. Like, <laughs> but imagine that in a house, man. Everything's creaky. What's the scariest film you've ever seen? Panel TV. Would it be? Conjuring. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Conjuring's awful. That killed me. Does it ever put your mind at rest, though, and you think, like... Oh, we're in that industry. Someone's directed that and someone's put that there and someone's edited this. 
for me to be scared. Now. It's like a theme park ride. Yeah. On a screen. Now I think that, but like as much as you can put logic towards it, it's still Mm. fear. It's the fear is irrational. As soon as you get in that, in that environment, when you're watching a film and you like, you get sort of like sucked into the storyline. I feel like it's very hard to detach yourself from it. Yeah. Yeah. Even after the film. Did you ever watch Fourth Kind? No. That's like pretty scary. It's about like owls and about aliens coming out. Owls? Owls, yeah. There's an owl. There's like an owl that kind of pops up throughout and it like goes to this girl's window every night and then all of a sudden like aliens start taking over. It's a, it was around the paranormal Ooh. activity time. Oh. Yeah, that's Jesus. trippy. Did you watch that? Mm. Scary. I remember getting told off um, loads by my mum because um, I will tell you the story in reverse order so it makes more sense, but I was fast asleep and my mum comes into my room screaming at me about how I've just like ruined her carpet. I had no idea what was going on. I was like, I, have, I had this memory, I think, because it was like almost traumatic. And like she like pulled the duvet off of me and she looked at my feet and I had like, um, my feet were like rainbows. They were like loads of different colors and stuff. And I was, and um, went down the stairs. And basically what I'd done is my parents had this brand new cream carpet in the family room. Um, it's like a room this size. And then apparently what I had done is I'd put um, felt tip pens in between my toes with the felt, <laughs> with the felt tip pointing downwards. God. And I'd also c- colored in the dog's paws in different colors. And me and the dog had just ran rampant on this carpet when my parents had friends over in the next room. And I uh, shit you not, this carpet was like, like an art attack episode or something. My mum was fuming. And then my dad had spent four hours the next day with carpet cleaner. Oh my god! I remember, I remember just being like, you know, when you're like, oh my god, I'm just like, like, not only am I in trouble, but like, look at the evidence. It's this yeah. whole room of evidence, and like, oh. my feet are covered. Like, I've been caught in the act of a smoking gun. You know? Did they get it out? Yeah, but they were fucking. That's pissed. good effort from them. That's the story my mum uses when she talks about what I was like as a kid. I've That's got cool. one like that. It's nowhere near that extreme, but um, <laughs> this isn't even that many years ago. My mum. Listened- <laughs> <laughs> this was last weekend yeah. my mum listens to the podcast so she'll be smiling as she hears this um, I was probably like 16 maybe and um, my <laughs> my favourite meal before I was a vegan was spaghetti bolognese mm, and we'd nice. have it like every week classic love it um, and one week I'm walking back from the kitchen to the dining room and there's a bit of spaghetti hanging off like the edge of my plate so I like go to like ooh before I sit down and get it and the whole plate Ugh. spills on me and then just goes straight <laughs> on the cream carpet my mum I, I know she won't mind me saying this but she absolutely flipped her lid and like I mean because it's a cream carpet and it's red bolognese yeah. just gone everywhere I'd burnt my chest which I didn't even notice at the time because I was too petrified of my mum <laughs> <laughs> you the mental pain off? no but like it, I was actually naked at the time. <laughs> <laughs> covered in pumpkin juice <laughs> <laughs> it, it literally just come out the oven just go and oh. sit down. So it burnt what? my chest, <laughs> gone all over the carpet, and then I don't think we ate any of it because we were just scrubbing the carpet for ages. And then there was a rug over it for a couple of years. And that's how was I was. Was there a stain there? I think where we'd scrubbed it so much, it just like worn down the carpet. Mm. Oh my God. It just wouldn't come out. She probably had like a red wine bolognese sauce as well, didn't she? It was. It was Do you know thick to thick red. Have you heard to get red wine out of carpet? Do you know what you have to use? White wine. Yeah. I've you ever use that? that? No, I've, never, I've heard of it, but I've never done that. If I spilt red wine, I'm not going to think, I'm gonna put more babe, wine go get it. the Sauvignon Blanc from the basement, <laughs> <laughs> quickly. Give, give me a fine white wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the cheap Audi shit, bring the good stuff in. <laughs> I've got quite a funny, uh, one year, a friend of mine managed to get hold of a ghillie suit, don't know how. A ghillie suit? Yeah, full on ghillie suit. What's a ghillie suit? You know, like snipers. Josh, can you bring that up on the screen? No. Uh, no. My, <laughs> where my wing? Oh, I'm anyway. in the wrong room. Um, yeah, my mate managed to get hold of a ghillie suit. Don't know how he did, um, but it's the thing that like snipers wear, you know, in like the forest or something, so they blend in. And uh, we went trick or, we went trick or treating with my friend's brother. We were like walking him around. Um, that we were probably like, I don't know, like fourteen, fifteen or something like that. Um, and we were walking my mate's brother around our sort of like town. Uh, there was loads of bushes and stuff, and this was like a really popular stretch where all the kids from all the local schools would walk up and down. And my mate thought it would be a really good idea. I wasn't dressed up because I was like, oh, I'm only out to you know, chaperone. chill with my friends. And yeah, chaperone. Um, yeah, my mate brought his ghillie suit and sat in the bush opposite these like this big group of houses so mm. that all the kids walked past. And he shat these kids up like so much. Like I've never, ever seen people get so scared. Because literally, I've got a video somewhere where he like walks backwards into a bush 
So he's like on the road and you can see him really clearly. And then he walks back and he just disappears. It's ridiculous. Wow. Um, but yeah, we frightened a lot of kids that day. And uh, yeah, it was very fun. <laughs> I had uh, one, one birthday. My parents said to me, what do you want for your birthday? And I think it was the first time where I didn't actually have anything planned. I didn't want like a, I don't know, a game or something. I was like, oh, I just want a gorilla suit. I don't know why I, I don't know what compelled me to ask for a gorilla suit and I completely forgot about it and then lo and behold on my birthday my parents had got me a gorilla suit and it, it was pretty good quality it must have cost like 60, 70 quid or something I have no idea but I remember putting it on me and my dog Holly at the time went fucking berserk at me she was like obviously like a big furry man in the house she didn't know what it was but I used that for a lot of trick or treating and um, used to run around high with wearing that good value nice. I, and I, I actually got rid of it I sold it for like 30 quid but I wish I kept it it, it fit a full grown man but it got very hot and it. it was like we're in a sauna oh my god yeah what's the hottest you've ever been that probably would it be yeah oh no one time I tried to compete with my dad in the sauna in centre parks what sounds like, sounds like something you <laughs> and I yeah. passed out and I, I very nearly passed out yeah dad had to like put, put me over his shoulder Jesus nice. yeah. Yeah, that shows the power of your dad yeah. Not only did he like, you know, exhort Batter me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He then carried, carried me out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a man. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to meet him. Yeah. Oh, there we go. What's the hottest you've ever been? That's such a weird question. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, I have no idea. Good, yeah. I'm pretty rubbish at like on the spot questions. It's something I've never been good at. I don't know if my brain just organizes stuff really well. Yeah. You've got very good like file. Uh, file, file system. Yeah, file system. Well, it, for me, Sorry, it's a mess. Go on. Go on. Okay. I was going to say, on the opposite end of that, mm. the coldest I think I've ever been was one Halloween, conveniently, when I decided to wear a morph suit at, for Halloween. And obviously... What did you wear under? Just boxes? No, yeah. What colour was a morph suit? Orange. Nice. Yeah, and I just oh. walked up and down my street in a morph suit. Idiot. In the winter. They are chilly. I was freezing. Jeez. And you could see it. If you know what I mean. Or you Come couldn't on. see it. It was really Ooh. bad. Really, really bad. And I remember going out with my mates... They're thinking, Matt, should you really be wearing that? I was like, yeah, probably not. Mm -hmm. But I haven't got anything else, so I'm just going to have to embrace it. And I ended up leaving like an hour early to go home just because I was so cold. You're shivering? Yeah. I was like, such an idiot. Mm. I I had to move schools. No, you didn't. (laughs) No, I didn't. (laughs) (laughs) I was so cold I had to move schools. What do you think would be the worst way to die? Heat. Heat exhaustion? Yeah. As an exhaustion or just like on fire? exhaustion just yeah. like you're absolutely sweating you're you have no control over the sweat and your body's just giving up on you what happens in that yeah in that situation you just keep getting really hot and then out. dehydrate yeah yeah there's a there's a channel on tiktok where they talk about like awful deaths and one of the ones that like stuck with me was there was a guy well there's two of them one of them was a guy who works at an industrial clay warehouse and they have like massive furnaces for clays and he got locked in it and turned on oh by, mis- by mistake. Oh my god! Just got like cooked alive in a bit. furnace. And when they got they got in there, it was just like brittle black bone, awful. And another one was a guy who went caving and um, fell down a little hole and got stuck in it upside down. Ooh, and mate, that that's like down. Mine. That is yeah, upside oh, down, small Jesus. hole. And like they they managed to get like they managed to they got a crew in. They got him like seventy five percent out, and then one of the ropes snapped, and he fell down, got even deeper, and then they couldn't get him out. So he, so he almost escaped. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. I think for me, the worst way of dying would be drowning. I think like mm. being, imagine being locked mm. in a room, you know, like uh, like on a boat or something. You're mm. locked in a contained room and then the water's just coming in. Yeah. It's going up and then yeah. you, you can, you've got this little gap that you can breathe out of. You've seen Kingsman? Mm. The yeah. film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do that in the first one, yeah, don't they? The, the, f- the, the, it's um, part of the challenge, isn't yeah. it? Something? They actually did that scene for real. It's like a set that gets lowered into a swimming pool and they all nearly drowned because the machine that was lowering them like jammed and, like so the, all the actors and the whole crew were like trapped what? and they Jesus. only just got them out in time wow and then they had to do this scene again for real obviously oh my god imagine they risk to, assessing they had that. to get the take right imagine like risking all of actors lives like that ah yeah. be right we'll get some more in kind of sick though that like, like they did it for real yeah I mean I, I don't understand how people get signed off for that I know <laughs> like, that's ridiculous yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you go about it. Surely the health and safety person can be like, no, this is very risky. We shouldn't do it. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do it anyway, though. <laughs> go on, Dan, you lead. Uh, I was actually going to say, what do you think of Squid Game? Because do you think it's, the hype's gone now? I think the hype's gone. I only finished it last night, actually. Did you? Yeah. But it was, wasn't the ending I was expecting. I guess we don't want to give too many spoilers mm. if we can help it. Yeah. But um, 
it was I always find that with the the shows that get a lot of traction on social media and get hyped up a lot they're good but they're always very like they can a lot of audiences can watch them mm. so they're not necessarily always the best for you I feel like we've all watched it and we've all enjoyed it but we're not like oh my god that's amazing I hope there's a season 2 or yeah. I want to watch it again it's a good show do you, do you think you watched it down to the fact that everyone else was watching it and you it was it was like the FOMO isn't it it's like yeah. also that there were so many memes that surrounded that yeah. do you think they pumped a shit ton of money into memes and advertisement like that you know um, Probably, you know when yeah. like the presidency you know when was it Barack he was getting voted in mm. he or was it Trump I don't know but they put a lot of money into like meme accounts to like run up really you know more more uh, wow. hype around them definitely a possibility right? mm. I've, I've, I've listened to like a couple of podcasts about it and there's like a lot more focus on especially in like film trailers having those like meme worthy moments yeah. mm. like um, the Spider-Man one there's that thing where like the Doctor Strange guy he goes through a portal and he like says a funny quote and then that was a meme template the next day mm. for like a couple of weeks and there's like just little moments like that can then can just get run with and that film's not even out yet yeah. it's not out until December Bird Box was the one that did it yeah, properly in, yeah, yeah mm. Bird Box was massively that wasn't it and mm. they, they admitted to doing that didn't they, they yeah. put like shit ton of money into it yeah wow. I could imagine they might have put it a little bit into it but I think there's probably a lot of meme accounts that would have seen that oh these memes are doing really well so we're just going to copy yeah. them yeah. Yeah. we're going to make our own template because on the it, hype yeah exactly and I think that probably helped get them publicised didn't it say that they it cost them like 24 mil to make that and it's currently worth like 900 or something that is, is that right? yeah Crazy. I think it's nearly a billion isn't it it's yeah. like Netflix are like this is the one that sports in the most money that's crazy but it's not like don't get me wrong it is good it's a good series and it's something different I don't think I've ever watched something like it it's carried by the concept yeah mm. yeah but the actual script of it the cinematography is great it's shot really well but the actual script the story isn't amazing it's not amazing the writing isn't not coming at the writers for Squid Game not that they'd care but um, yeah it's Max not, the pilot it's not <laughs> <laughs> the series is shit <laughs> didn't you um, I, I watched it in Kore- Korean with subtitles mm. did you watch it in English dub is that right yeah I've yep. never done that I didn't even I've know you, I didn't even know you could do that you came in and were like yeah I watched it in English dub it's weird and I was like what I didn't realise until like the ninth episode that um it would have made more sense to watch it in Korean, but mm. I think because it just automatically came up in English at the start, wow. I just started watching it like that, and that was it. Apparently, the translation is really off. It was. Yeah, did was you watch it in English? Man? No, I watched it in Korean. The um the the script was poor in English. Really, like the stuff would happen. It was like, has a, a seven year old written that? Mm. Like there was like no wow. there was no love to the, to the language in that sense. I yeah. guess what it is as well with like with subtitles, you can be a bit more generous in like the length of what they say. Mm. Whereas if they're dubbing it, they have to fit it in the same grammars. Yeah. yeah, in the same amount of that they're saying. To be fair, that must be so difficult. Yeah, imagine catering for like the entire like because the majority of countries speak English. I would say so. Imagine like your your native language isn't English, and you're trying to make a film that's going to go global. That yeah. must be so difficult if We'd, you've got an audience that's not prepared to listen to it in your native language. Yeah. I think we spoke about it before, which is, like, the mad thing is, like, things like the Oscars and, like, the Golden Globes, they're such, like, Western film oriented, aren't they? Mm. And that those are, like, the big budget films. But just because, like, this French film, for example, hasn't had a dub, no one's seen it. Yeah. Which yeah. is the mad thing. That they like, not even involved. Do you think Squid Game will win anything? Sure, it will win quite a lot of awards. I don't. What award season was that going to? Or like what no award idea. shows? Because Oscars is obviously only films. Could it be like BAFTA? Was that British? British, That's British yeah. What's, know, what's the, is there a global? Like the Golden Globes, I guess. Yeah. Something like that. Insane. I think it Insane. can't get that much hype and not win something. Do you think there'll be a season two? Yeah. 100%. Do you think it'll be as hyped? Nah. I think it'll be a bit like Stranger Things. You know, where Stranger mm. Things, the first season was so good. Everyone's yeah. gripped on that, and then yeah. the second season and the third was all a bit like, oh, it's a bit boring now. Done now. I kind of, I kind of wish that there wasn't a season two though. I feel like it should end now. Yeah. What else are they going to do? Yeah, they might made nine hundred million. I know, which like, is why they will make a season two, won't they? Yeah, yeah that's they'll true. Make the that's same true. again. Do you reckon they'll start making those tracksuits as like merch? I'm Probably. very surprised <laughs> that no one's done that. I'm not going to lie. You make that all over Amazon. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I reckon like most Halloween costumes are going to be Squid Games this year. I did almost do that. Yeah. But the mask was like £40. Pounds. I was like, I'm not that invested in the film series. No. Nah. Unfortunately. Although that would have been quite a cool costume. Yeah. 
Yeah. The tracksuits are kind of comfy as well. <laughs> you wear it around the house, shopping. Shopping. Do you know like white the the white vans that they wear in that the, the sales yeah. of white vans has like skyrocketed as really? well since then. Yeah. No way. Yeah. People really. People have been like buying loads of like not loads of them, but people have been buying white vans up like never before. Do you reckon someone will like do something similar to Squid Game? I, I saw some that people like if there's like a a big Hollywood studio trying to remake it, don't bother because like I'm sure there's people probably thinking, oh, we can do. This oh again yeah, hundred like, percent. Big A list oh, Hollywood yeah. celebrities, With, like mad CGI and all that stuff. Yeah, I reckon that that whole premise will get taken and Probably. shifted a little bit. But then it's basically Hunger Games mm. in a yeah. way. Yeah, it is based off other things, surely. Yeah, it's not. Battle Royale was like a film that came out. That That's was, a, I think, it was Japanese or Korean, where loads of school school kids, like secondary school kids, get taken. Their bus gets hijacked on a school trip and they all get dropped in an island in pairs and there's weapons and stuff around the island and it's last pair standing survives. And it's like a really dark film. Mm-hmm. But it's a similar concept to that, which was really popular. And now look at the games like COD and Fortnite are all Battle Royale-esque. Yeah. You, drop, you drop in last man standing. Mm. And that all, it all kind of comes from that game, that, that, film. that film. Like being the last one. Last one standing, yeah. yeah. That's an interesting topic, to be fair. Do you think that that Battle Royale kind of theme will die out because we've seen so many now shows films games emulating that style well it's a bit like um squid game is the same concept as fall guys do you remember that got hype about eight months ago yeah there was like a hundred people join a lobby and they're like you'll play as like a little um jelly like a little jelly person oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, they, and there's just and they're like you, once you die you're out the, you're out completely you can mm. spectate and then like it's last man standing after like nine rounds exact same concept hmm that's pretty mad. Do you remember doing Laser Quest as a kid? Mm. <laughs> Smooth transition. <laughs> that's, that's pretty so crazy. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, how that's mad crazy. Have you ever been paintballing? Laser Quest was crazy. That, that going back to the point earlier about being scared, I remember playing Laser Quest being mm. really scared at points. Because they'd be like, like hiding behind like oil drums and stuff. You'd be in there for like your 11th birthday and then there's grown men like bowling about. Yeah. Like, they feel like the size of a rugby player. Yeah, that was very that's very true. scary. And paintballing. Have you been yeah. paintballing? Yeah, that hurts. Yeah, it does hurt so much. Sorry, I shouldn't have diverted off. I, I used know, to really okay. enjoy that stuff, to be fair. Especially, like, meleeing. That was cool. What? Like, meleeing. What's that, punching? You know, like, like gun butt and stuff like that. You used to punch people? No, maybe. <laughs> I, got, I got quite into it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Max is banned from every paintball arena. <laughs> Are you physically harming people? No, no, no. Just psychologically. <laughs> <laughs> Such a pilot, mate. Yeah. Is there anything that you've been into recently, Ben? Uh, new topics, things, films, toys. Toys. Not really, no. Good podcast. I've been, I've been painting a lot lately. Yeah? A lot of painting. Do you find that quite therapeutic? A lot of home it's quite rewarding, isn't it? Uh, I like it until you have to start painting wallpaper. Because painting wallpaper is very slow. Mm. I never enjoyed painting rooms. Oh, it's the, I thought it was so boring. Mate, painting a room is like the slow version of jet washing a patio. When you jet wash a patio, it's like so satisfying because it like literally changes color instantly. Yeah. Whereas painting is like that, but you have to wait for it to dry. But you still get the same amount of satisfaction. Like, fuck now, this room looks incredible. I just yeah. don't like, like, I'll do one coat and it'll take me ages. And I'll be like, oh, it looks it's almost not there. as good as I thought it was going to, which means I'm going to have to do it four more times. I'm like, Dude, you can transform a room. It's big change, mm. minimal cost. You know, you can transform a whole room or a whole house. So paint, yeah, go out there and paint to your heart's content. It's pretty mad. Like your kitchen looks completely different. Yeah, you spent your Sunday painting it. Yeah, completely different. That is mad. That yeah. you can do that with just. It is a day. mad. I think that's why I'm so into it at the moment. because you can literally just everything looks so different. Yeah, yeah, it's sick. Thanks. Nice. That's good. That makes me want to go home and paint now. You should paint. Yeah. Should we paint something? Can't Bloody hell. Paint. Should we just start painting stuff? Should we just start a new company? Yeah. Paint. Paintworks. Painterworks. Yeah. Painterworks. Fun. That's what I've been into. Yeah. What about you, Dan? What have you been into? Um, How's CrossFit going? Uh, cross, well, it was good uh, until I hurt myself, <laughs> and now I can't do that anymore. Can we, hurt t- can we tell the, uh, can we tell want, the yeah. viewers? What happened? I, when we were out on Saturday, I <laughs> tried to do a toaster bar gymnast move on a scaffold bar that's probably <gasps> oh my god i remember it now <laughs> yes you went flying off of it didn't you <laughs> onto your back mate it was about seven or eight feet high and i've not been in this much pain in a long time 
You right. really stacked it. Yeah, mate. I completely forgot that happened. How it like echoed down the road. I don't remember much from that night. Um, so yeah, I was hanging onto a bar. I had to, Max had to lift me up to get to it. It was that high. I couldn't reach it. I did I not lift it. I was asked for a lift up. I want that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I said Max lift me up, so he lifted me up, and then I was. It hanging was on Dad's bar, fault. And I, I had my toes up near my hands up here, and then I just fell backwards and. My elbows have never hurt this much before. And my, the base of my back, mate, is in fucking a lot of pain. Have you ever seen... I, like, I can't walk at the moment. I, I can't remember that. Do you, do you remember that happening? That was crazy. I, don't, I didn't see you hit the floor. Oh I think I saw you doing it. I was like, oh my God, what's he doing? Next thing I turned around, you're on the floor like that. Like a crab on its back. Because I, I obviously hit the floor... I get up and everyone else is then on the floor because everyone's on the floor crying with laughter. Yeah, like yeah. you were literally in the middle of the road laughing, like yeah. crouched down laughing. Um, but yeah, the grip on the bar was, the bars are quite big and mm. my hands just slipped. I got two in and then they just slipped and I landed flat on my back and I've never, I'm never doing that ever again. To be fair, you got a couple of good reps in. Yeah. But I remember it just happening oh, God, and then, so you know, those times when something happens and you like, you like turn around mm. and like, that didn't happen. Like that, like, there's no way that, that that has actually just happened. It's just and so embarrassing. Around, and I saw you on the floor and I was like, oh my God. I'm not going to, I can't laugh because I was just like, if that was me, I'd like, oh. Everyone was just laughing. It, like there were people walking, like couples out having a lovely evening and I'm just led on the floor, like actually <laughs> crippled, mate. Did it really hurt at the time? Yeah. Because you obviously like, you were drunk. pain, mate. Yeah. And like I've, I've like, can't, I can straighten my arm, but it hurts so much. And I don't know if that's muscle. I don't know if I've pulled a muscle like hanging. Or I've just smashed my elbows. Smashed the really elbow. ironic thing is, they say um, doing CrossFit makes you injured, and it's not—it's not the fact you've gone to CrossFit and hurt yourself. <laughs> it's the fact you've drunk, you've, you've drank alcohol, and then gone out and performed CrossFit in urban areas and then hurt yourself. So the sport itself hasn't fucked you. Yeah, it's you, me. I am the error in this situation. So yeah, I would suggest if you ever see scaffolding, never try and do anything with that. <laughs> yeah, like leave the scaffolding to the experts. Oh, <laughs> scaffolders, yeah. yeah. I don't Leave think they spend their time doing the toaster bar, though. Oh, man, that really hurt. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. Real bad. Any big life updates? Max, you've had a pretty big life update. Yeah, I'm in the process of getting a flat. Come on. Very exciting. Come on, um, <laughs> a flat. It's just no emotion because you've got these glasses <laughs> on. <laughs> I've got a flat. I'm in the process of getting a flat. It's been a very exciting process so far. Um, we're getting a new build, though, so there's no... It's just the building site. Um, so we've been into like look at the plans and look at the things that we may or may not be getting depending on choices and things like that. Can you choose like stuff that goes in and doesn't go in based on what you want now because you've bought it? Like, can you say actually, can you put that there? Um, structurally, no. Like, obviously, yeah, we couldn't say oh, we want the bathroom on the other side. Yeah. But uh, things like, for example, so it's a two bed flat, and we've said to them, oh, we're going to use the two bed as, as the as the. Blah, blah, blah. Let's start that again. We're going to use the second bedroom as an office. Mm-hmm. So they said, oh, okay, well, instead of putting carpet in there, do you want us to put in hard flooring and uh, we don't have to put the wardrobes in there. We could put the wardrobe, we could put all the wardrobes in the, in the bedroom. Um, so little changes like that, yeah. Um, but to be honest, we haven't really gone through the, the real extent of what we can change yet because we've got to wait till January for when the build is like a little bit more progressed. But it's been really weird, like... Imagine walking into a car dealer's and specking a car. It's quite similar. So with those, like, like handing you like tile samples and things like that. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Um, How many plug sockets are you going to have in? So this many, mate. <laughs> oh my god! I was so. When I tell you I was buzzing, as someone that enjoys technology and has a lot of things that they need to charge, when they were like, "Yeah, so there's going to be like, I think one of the rooms has got like 11. Wow. Oh it's, ridi- mate, it's ridiculous. Wow. It's absolutely ridiculous. And all of them are like, well, I don't know if all of them, but some of them are like USB ones. Oh, come on. And they were like, oh, yeah, you're going to have like, even, even little things like spotlights. With, like, you know, the built-in spotlights. I was like, oh, my God. I remember going to my mate's houses and seeing that they had spotlights thinking, fuck, these guys have money. And now... <laughs> no, you have money. <laughs> I don't even have money. And it's going in there. <laughs> fuck, these guys have money. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's weird. Like, looking, we were looking on Amazon the other day for like, toasters and kettles and things I was like we don't really need that do we no, we don't need anything you should make sure you get your theme correct mate otherwise you're moving to the kitchen and everything will be different colours the thing is so the the colours of the walls and stuff like that they all come white as standard mm. you're not allowed to touch them for, well handy. you're not allowed you are but they advise you not to touch it for the first like 18 months because it needs to breathe or whatever um, 
so everything comes very minimalist very standard and Karis my partner is very very good at like uh, interior design she loves it um, and I think she and I have very similar styles so to be honest I back her to just crack on yeah. here's the card I said, I said to her I was like all I care about is having a nice office setup mm. and a big TV mm. just all I'm worried about is the tech side of the house I really because all Joss knows we watch a lot of the same YouTubers and they're all very tech based and all their homes are smart homes so That's I just see want. that and I have not got the budget for a smart home at all but I will somehow figure out a way to buy some like Amazon Basics, you know, like the curtain things yeah. that pull your curtains for you. Oh, yeah. And it's just going to, like, the ones that make so much noise, and like, as they pull your curtains <laughs> over. <laughs> but I'm convinced, balling on a budget to make a smart home on no money at all. Balling on a budget. What's your, <laughs> Max's new Instagram account. <laughs> What's your brain going to be? Is it Alexa? Are you going to use Alexa? To be honest, I don't know enough about it. I've never actually had an Alexa. The only time I've ever used Alexa was in here. Mm. Um but I think so. I've, I've looked at Google, what's it, Google Home or something like that. But uh, no, I'd be tempted with Apple, I think, if I was going to do it. Really? Apple Home, because you get Apple TV, MacBook phone. Mm. We we use Google Home. So we've got a couple of speakers, and then the TV works on Google Home as well. So Is it good? I, yeah. I can say, like, hey, Google, open YouTube on my TV. It really? Yeah. Wow. Or, like, start playing The Office on my TV. That is cool. That is Pretty very sick. cool. And is that through an Apple TV? No, that's, that's all just... through because like it's Google Home and then like it's a Sony TV, so it's like Google Play Store. Okay. All of that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, it works well. Might look into Big that. Fan. All I I'm just so excited to have a Nest doorbell. <laughs> Even though there's not many people who are going to be ringing the doorbell, but I'm just so excited to have one just because I think the whole premise of it is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. You've got a, a ring doorbell, Dan, haven't you? I have, yeah. You yeah, quite yeah. like it. Yeah, it's nice. Sometimes we see the foxes playing outside, shitting in the front garden. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't do anything about them though, do you go and it? join them in your cat just costume. let the dog out yeah, oh mate that'd be bad I should go out there in my cat costume really scare them off yeah big cat I wonder what Stella would do if she saw me like this right now devil cat she'd go crazy crazy <laughs> absolute crazy. craziness um, I've uh, I've not really got many life updates to, to update you with here at the moment uh, have you done any decorating at home recently no decorating no uh, nope Joss, any life updates? Not really. Um, me and my partner are looking to move flat soon. Come on. We're, nice. not, we're not buying yet because she's still a student, so it's hard to get a mortgage. Um, I need one, mate. Just do it. <laughs> so, yeah, we're rent- renting currently, but hopefully moving. I'd like to move before Christmas, but we'll see what we find. Got another view in tomorrow. Hopefully it goes well. You've looked at quite a few now. Or have you... We've looked almost looked at quite a few now. <laughs> we had a cancel during the other week, which was a mess, as you boys know. Bastards. Yeah. Um, but we've only looked at one other place. Oh, no, two, actually. But wasn't successful. But yes, hopefully soon. We'll be moving flat. We hope it goes well. Thank you. Thank you, Autoworks. Mm. Thank you, the podcast. We haven't addressed Dan's jingly balls on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can hear them. Yeah, point. there's a couple little jingles throughout. Yeah. I'm sure the ca- has the camera got it. We need to make sure that. Look at that. I do like a chef, don't I? <laughs> you do. Like a like a little chef at like a, a service station. What's your favourite service station? Membry. Oh, yeah, I drive past that every day. I've never been in there. Membry is a good one. There's also one about an hour and forty five south of here, south east, that has an Nando's in. That we've been really? to, we can do a few times, yeah. Wow. And we used to get halloumi fries when Dan wasn't when we were both like pre vegan. Wow. Really? And it was the shit, Dan, wasn't it? The shit. Where would where would you head? Going on that route? Just, nope. just to the services. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what? There's, there's so it's a rainy Tuesday. Beaconsfield services. I don't know if that's Beaconsfield's the one very good. Beacon Beacon Beacon. Beaconsfield services yeah. is like I remember people at college would literally go home from college and then drive to Beaconsfield services to hang out. In what? the service station because there's so much stuff there. It's like it's like a mall. Yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. Weird. I wonder if that's the future of service stations. It's going to become more moly. God, I hope more moly. I'm pretty sure I've been to one in the south and they had a fucking Peugeot garage in it. Nice. What? Yeah, it's pretty good. Though. Shop for a new car when yeah. you fill up your other car. Yeah. <laughs> and can I trade in live? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Imagine if you're really frustrated because your car's shit or you're having a really shit journey and then you walk into a bright shiny Peugeot garage and they're it's like, "Fucking oh, Peugeot, though. Come and have this." Come on. Yeah, you mean, don't like Peugeot, do you? And if in French. French aren't meant to make cars, mate. You know? German's really Peugeot. good at making Hot cars. Take. 
They're amazing at food. They've got some nice places. Oh, my God. Biggest life update. I don't know if we've already discussed this. I can't remember because my brain doesn't work that fast. Car update. Oh, there yeah. We go, How have we not discussed this yet? This is massive. Uh, well, it's not. It's like, I mean, it's concrete, but it hasn't like fully. I don't know if this is the way we should announce it. Okay, maybe not. I think tease I th- it. I think, tease it. I think when you get it, you should do a video about it. I think we should definitely do a video on the finance, the finance side, because that's really interesting. Yeah, that's so clickable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, um, well, yeah, I guess the the teaser is I'm getting an, an EV. I won't necessarily say which one yet. Nice. Um, Good finance tease. video soon come. Yes. Yeah. For those that don't know tech, what is an EV? Electric vehicle. So it's full electric plug-in. I'll be getting a, a little charger installed in the garage at home. Zoom, zoom. It will come in December. Zoom, uh, zoom. Me and Amber test drove yeah. one on sa- Saturday, and it yeah. uh, changes your life, really. It's fucking so quick. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Are you going to get flames down the side of it and or a spoiler? It comes like that in stock. Yeah. Nice. nice. D- delivery is December? Dece- December. All right, so Christmas content. Oh my god! Christmas content. I spent Christmas Christmas in my electric car. <laughs> nice, nice, very close. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> so many cuts in this. Alright, should we wrap it wrap it there? Thank you very much for joining us for another Otter podcast with all of us. Um, you as the pilot, me as the pilot, you as the cat, me as prison Mike, meow, and me as mummy. <laughs> Or Michelin Man or Little Road Chef. You decide. Let me, let me know in the comments what you think I look like. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just say Muppet. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous. Fantastic. Thanking right. you very much. Right, I'm going to go undress myself. Thanks for listening. Josh, can going. you help me in the, in the storage room? Of course I can, boss. Can I watch? Yep. Can I watch? Yep. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you want to try and get a photo on the backdrop? Yes. Uh, it yeah. would be nice to you, yeah. Get well, an individual. Well, sure. I'm going to stay sat down until it's ready, because otherwise this is going to peel off. All right. Thanks for listening. Thank you, everyone.